Hey, what's going on guys? Christian Hanna Horror here. Welcome to episode 2 of Viewers, Comments, and Questions, the show where I try to respond and answer to your comments and questions. Again, it, just like last week, if you want to be in episode 3, which is next week, leave a comment below on this video, and it just may be in episode 3. Without further ado, though, let's get started and answer your questions. What was your first pretty expensive horror collectible you bought? Love your channel and content, bro. Um, thank you for the love. Um, you know, it's hard to remember the very first expensive thing I got, but I know that the very first thing that really transformed uh, the horror room, as it were, was when my wife got me the skeleton mask from Halloween 3 from a company called Silver Champagne Novelties, which was owned by Sean Clark, who we know from Horror's Hollowed Grounds. It's got autographs from Tommy Lee Wallace on it, Sean Clark on it. It's approved by Tommy Lee Wallace. It's an amazing mask, and they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, the Trick or Treat Studios are great, not dissing those at all, but those masks are absolute primo top of the line. Just the best. As good as, like, the original Dime Posts. Victor Crowley versus the new Blood Jason Voorhees are in a fight to the death. Who are you putting your money on and why? Love your channel, man. Yeah, that's actually a funny question. You know, honestly, Victor Crowley could take that because Victor Crowley is so monstrous and visceral and destructive. Uh, Victor Crowley could take Part 7 Jason, but Part 7 Jason still has kind of like that element to him of just, you know, Part 7 Jason as a god. So I think I'm going to have to go with Part 7 Jason, but Victor Crowley would go the distance. He would go the distance, but I'm going to give the edge to the new blood Jason. My question is, which standalone horror film do you think should have gotten a sequel? This was my original question, but now I changed my mind about my choice. I think The Burning and My Bloody Valentine needs sequels. I'd like one for Halloween 3 very much if Tom Atkins returns. That's a good question, too. I've got to agree with you. The one horror movie that could use a sequel, but at the same time, I'm not really upset about it because I just think it helps the legacy of that film is My Bloody Valentine. It got a remake, as we know, which is pretty good, but... You know, you could have really gotten a sequel with My Bloody Valentine 2. They could have done a prequel thing where they actually showed Harry Warden. I would have been pretty cool with that. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of bummed out they didn't do that. But then again, the fact that it's, it's a standalone film, there's just that legacy for My Bloody Valentine. Uh, so I, would, I wouldn't mind a sequel for that one, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't at the same time. Does that make any sense? Hey Christian, love the channel, man. Okay, here's my question. Since it's winter, what are a couple of your favorite horror movies that take place in a snowstorm? I always loved Stephen King's Storm of the Century and Misery or Windchill, to name a few. Horror movies that take place in a snowstorm? That's a good question. Thanks for the love. You know, one comes to mind that I'm a huge advocate and fan for, uh, Adam Green, one of my favorite directors. I love him. I love movies he's done like... Uh, you know, Digging Up the Marrow, and of course Hatchet, which we were just talking about. He did this movie called Frozen, that is my Frozen, not the Disney Frozen. This movie called Frozen was amazing. Such a simple premise, but done to the utmost. It's amazing. He did this, this movie where these people get stuck on a ski lodge deal where they're going up the ramp to go up the mountain, and they get forgotten up there, and it's freezing cold, and it's snowing, and it's a blizzard, and they have to Wait it out or die. Great movie. Great movie. Check that out if you haven't seen it. It's Adam Green's Frozen. I love the 1986 Trick or Treat soundtrack by Fastway. What are your thoughts on it? And do you have a favorite horror soundtrack? Oh boy, Trick or Treat, Fastway. That's one of my favorite albums. I have the album on vinyl, as a matter of fact. I listen to it quite a bit. I'm actually a really big Fastway fan. Their debut album is absolutely amazing. It's barroom rock and roll before it became more arena rock like the 86 album which is great but man they're such a great band uh soundtracks that i love that's obviously one of them um the the nightmare on elm street part four soundtrack is really good as well as part five now this music doesn't necessarily show up in the film that much uh specifically songs like mammoths uh can't take the hurt from part five nightmare on elm street but the soundtracks are amazing and they shape music uh, that i love today so the Nightmare 4 and 5 soundtracks, I couldn't live without those. If you haven't listened to those, I'm talking about the music from the motion picture, the rock songs, and the songs by Go West and Vinnie Vincent Invasion. Check those out. Those are amazing tracks. Awesome video. I love how interactive this is, and it's cool getting to hear you answer to questions. Here's mine for the next episode. How do you rank these six franchises from worst to best? Halloween, Friday the 13th, Elm Street, Child's Play, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Scream. Hey, Derek. Glad you liked the show. Um, okay, so rank these in order, you ask. Uh, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Elm Street, Child's Play, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Scream. Okay, this is from worst to best. Scream, Child's Play, 
Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to entertain and show us so many movies. As a matter of fact, I have bought quite a few movies that you have reviewed, like Nightmare Beach, Return of the Living Dead Part 2, Vamp, The Blob, and others. Keep up the good work. Hey, thanks for the compliment. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you enjoyed movies like Nightmare Beach, Return of the Living Dead 2, Vamp, The Blob, and others. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I've got some movie reviews coming up. As a matter of fact, I had the Blu-ray right here somewhere. It's right over there. Uh, I've got a review for Dark Man coming up, which is probably my favorite Sam Raimi film, if not the second one to Army of Darkness. Uh, another one of those action-style movies with horror elements that I can't wait to talk about. Uh, and I've got some others coming, so uh, get ready for more reviews. I'm trying to spotlight films that touch me more so than, you know, deciding whether something's a cult hit or what needs more love. I just watch movies, and if something really is I, I, is I attract to, I want to share it with you guys. That's all I'm that's all I'm trying to do. So I'm I am very glad that you're enjoying some of these movies that I've talked about. Stick around; we got a lot more to come. How did you get into Nightmare on Elm Street? Ooh, how did I get into Nightmare on Elm Street? Just like the rest of the world, in a sense, you know, I was a fan of of of, of characters that were that big, like Freddy Krueger, who is on my wallpaper on my computer right here. Um, and as you can see, I got my part four behind me, my standee, and a part two right there. I'm obsessed with this franchise. I love this franchise. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, it really started with just the name Freddy Krueger. I, I was petrified of this guy before I even saw the movies. Um, and I think that the character has just resonated with me more than anything. Uh, I'm a punk rocker, and to me, Freddy is so punk rock. He's against the rules. He's against the grain. He talks, which is almost, you know, uh, not typical with slasher characters, uh, especially of that magnitude. You look at Michael and you look at Freddy, and they don't say anything. But, uh, well, un unless you talk about Jason Goes to Hell, which I love. But Freddy was always vocal from the start. And I love that about him. I love his look. I love his style. I love the sound of those films. But how did I get into it? You know, I knew who the character was. And I'm going to talk about this when I retrospect Nightmare Part 2. But a quick version of that is I rented Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 from Blockbuster in 2009 when I just wanted to start watching Nightmare movies. And the movie scared me so much that I didn't sleep for days. And then I became obsessed with the franchise. So, um, 2009, renting part two from Blockbuster. But be sure to uh, get ready for my retrospective because I'm going to talk more about that soon. What's the plan for 10K subscribers? What's the plan for 10K subscribers? Uh, to keep bringing you guys the best content I, I can, I guess. You know, um, YouTube's been a long journey for me, and I'm actually sitting at 9.99 subscribers right now. So, we're right there. Um, I'm excited. I'm happy. It, it, it feels, uh, I don't want to say well-deserved on my part, but it's been a long time coming, and I really started to put some effort into my YouTube journey about three or four years ago, getting the right equipment, getting microphones, getting lighting, uh, you know, doing that kind of thing, trying to bring you guys content that can be enjoyable to hear and view. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm not the prettiest guy in the world, but... Uh, you know, uh, I just have fun, and I'm really blessed that I have had messages. Just like earlier, somebody said, thank you for talking about Nightmare Beach. I'm a big fan of the movie now. That's great. That's why I do it, the connection with you guys, and I've made great friends. So the plan is to keep bringing you guys the best content I can. Have you ever seen the movie Fade to Black 1980? It's about a teen boy that is obsessed with movies. He then snaps and starts killing all the people that have been picking on him. I heard this is getting a Blu-ray release sometime soon. Hey, Boyd, great question. I love the movie Fade to Black. I is one, I'm one of those people that saw it when it was talked about on Shudder and premiered on Shudder. Um, actually, no, before that, it was uh, the documentary uh, In Search of Darkness when it was talked about, and I was like, I've got to see this movie. So I watched it when it was on Shudder, and I fell in love with the movie. It's um, an absolute masterpiece, if you ask me, so I can't wait to get the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray. Uh, matter of fact, i got to pre-order that. But yeah, huge fan. I think it's fantastic. 10 out of 10. Uh, uh, A-plus movie, in my opinion. If you haven't seen Fade to Black, guys, please check it out on Shudder. And don't worry, it's got good replay value, so you'll want to pick up the Blu-ray as well. What is the craziest, most extreme movie you've ever seen? One outside normal horror standards. Example, Cannibal Holocaust, Necromantic, Flowers of Flesh, and Blood, etc. Hey, Cornhead fan, great question. Probably Serbian film. You know, everybody talks about that movie. It's wild. It's crazy. You know, I was actually talking to my friend Andrew about this the other day. He said, have you noticed there's this resurgence for this movie called Megan is Missing? And I had seen this movie back in 2012, 2011, uh, right when it came out, as a matter of fact. And it's starting to resonate with people a lot now, uh, which is cool. 
I'm not trying to sound like the OG here, but you know, I remember when I saw that movie back in 2011 or 12, my heart was beating through my chest when we got to a certain point of the film, which I will not spoil at all. So if you want to get on that Megan is Missing train, I highly recommend that you do because I think it is an extremely important film in terms of its message. And it's not a social message like you're thinking. It's more of a be careful who you talk to on the internet kind of message. And I'll leave it at that. Megan is missing. Check that out. That's all the time we have for today, guys. Thank you for sending in your questions and comments. Again, drop yours below to try to be on episode three, and I'll do my best to get to it. But this is Christian Hannah Hoare saying happy Friday. Everybody have a great weekend. I love you guys. Get ready for some Christmas reviews. I think Christmas Evil is coming up next. That's when I'm going to be reviewing the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray. As well as Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which I did Part 1 a year or so ago. So it's time to do Part 2, um, as well as other videos. Thank you, guys. Christian Hannah Hoare, love you. See you next time.